In our last videos, we have been saving specimen details to our local SQLite database. And now in this video, we're going to show those saved specimens in a fragment. So first, I'm going to need to create a fragment, or actually rather a layout that will include a, flag, a fragment. I right-click on Layout, I choose New, and I'm going to choose XML, Layout XML File. Uh, file name, we're going to say Specimen Show. Uh, that'll be good. Linear layout's fine, and I choose finish. One thing we want to think about is having one function occupy one screen. Instead of spreading one function over multiple screens, we want to allow the user to do everything required for one function in one screen. So what we'll do is we're going to start with a vertical linear layout. We'll drop that right across the top. That will allow us to put in an autocomplete text for a search criteria and then a button that follows. So I will go ahead and look for the autocomplete text. Autocomplete text view, there we go. I'll drop that onto our linear layout. Okay. And uh, I'm going to look for a button and we'll put the button on the linear layout as well. Okay. Okay, that looks about right. Now, underneath that, we want to put a, a, a fragment. So I'm going to look for a fragment, and it's down at the bottom under custom. I'm going to drag this, and I don't want this to be part of the uh, vertical linear layout, but I want it to be part of the grander linear layout uh, that makes up this whole screen. We want a list fragment. A list fragment is a special kind of fragment that is meant to just show a list of data. So we select list fragment, choose OK. And it looks like, well, let's see. Looks like maybe we can drop it right down here. We can always fix it under the covers if we need to. Yeah, and sure enough, it didn't go exactly where I wanted. So uh, I'm going to take this fragment. I'm going to drag it up and just make it a direct child of our linear layout so that it goes, well, that didn't work either. Oh, I see. I need to take the autocomplete text view and the button and make them children of our inner linear layout. So I just drag those over like so. Now it still doesn't look exactly right. It looks kind of funny to be honest with you. So let's change the outer layout. Let's change its orientation from horizontal to vertical. Just a moment. And orientation, change the vertical. Now the inner layout, let's change from vertical to horizontal. And suddenly that gives us a little bit better view of what we want. The only trick is the inner layout is kind of squishing uh, our fragment down below. We want to change some of these properties. So layout height, let's change that to uh, wrap content like so. Okay, now you see that the linear layout at the top is only consuming the space required by the autocomplete text view and what's going to be the search button. Let's click on our fragment down below and let's change uh, layout height match parent is fine. That means take up all the room that you can. A uh, layout width wrap content, uh, that's not fine because you see it's kind of squished on the left side of the screen. Let's change that to match parent as well. And you see now that fragment that's going to be showing our plant results is consuming a whole lot more of the screen. So I choose save. Now we know a couple of golden rules. First of all, uh, we want to change the ID as quickly as we can of anything we're going to be programming against. So the autocomplete text view, let's look for the ID for that. And there it is. We're going to call this ACT search uh, parameter or something like that. ACT uh, search, ACT search is fine to be honest with you. Let's just leave it like so. The text inside, we're going to do a little trick here. Instead of having a separate label, we are going to uh, put the label right inside the autocomplete text view. So click the ellipsis, and we know this is a bit of an involved process, but we click the ellipsis, new resource, new string value, resource name, LBL search term, resource value, enter search term, and choose OK. Okay, uh, now with this one, uh, we might want to do a little bit of uh, weight. You see, now that I have less text in there, it's not consuming as much space uh, horizontally. So what we can do is we can add a weight to this. I'm going to say 
layout um, weight. You see that set to one. Let's bump that to two. Okay. Now our button, let's take a look at our button. Layout weight, that's not set. I'm going to set that to one. What that does, typically, although it's not giving me the results I want now, what that does is that will basically have the autocomplete text take up two over the sum of one plus two, so two thirds of the available space, and the button will take up one third of the available space. I might have to uh, trick that a little bit to get that to work, or I can maybe change the uh, uh, change the wrap content. We'll change this to uh, match parent. See if we can do a little trickery to get that to work. No luck yet. Not going to worry terribly about it. Uh, I think we'll get it to work okay. Um, so anyway. Uh, new button, I'm going to select this and I'm going to choose ID. We're going to say BTN search. And once again, the label from new button, we're going to change that, go through the same process we went through before. Okay, new resource, new string value, uh, LBL search, search. And okay. And now we have the search term. Now for the fragment, if we look under the covers, we're going to see that it has a name Android app list fragment. What we want to do is make our own fragment class that extends from list fragment and put that in here. So I go back to project view and I'm going to go up to our package where we have all of our UI elements. Just a moment. Let me reorganize things just a little bit here. And play, okay. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to say new Java class and we will call this Specimen show fragment. Something like that is fine. And then I'm going to choose OK. And I'm going to say extends. Oops. Just a moment. And then list fragment. And save. Now this gives me what I need to finish up that layout. I go back to specimen show. And for Android name, I'm going to replace Android app list fragment with the package name and then specimen show fragment. You see it auto completes for me. If I give it a chance, that is. There we go. And save. Back to specimen show fragment now. Okay. In the specimen show fragment, we want to fetch the specimens that are available. And at this point, we're just going to fetch all of them. Later, we'll go back and we will try to just fetch... Um, the ones that match the search term. Now let's take a look at our DAO and remember we started with that stub because here's the trick our offline specimen DAO we haven't filled out either of the search methods but let's look at the stub and with the stub uh, sorry specimen DAO stub uh, we have filled out kind of a default implementation with just a uh, uh, one hard-coded result, which is the Circus Canadensis. This is going to be a good example of why we use interfaces, which I've mentioned before, but this will be a good practical example. We're going to wire up our user interface against this stub just to make sure it works. And then once we've done that, uh, we're going to go ahead and finish off our offline, plant, offline specimen DAO We'll probably do that in a separate video because this one will get pretty long by then. So I expand, I go back to a specimen show fragment. And what I'm going to do is override the onCreate method. Okay. And the onCreate method will leave, leave super where it is. I need a specimen DAO. So I'm going to say specimen DAO equals new specimen uh, DAO uh, uh, specimen DAO stub. Okay. Alt-Enter to organize. Uh, now I haven't declared specimen DAO, so Alt-Enter create field specimen DAO. And remember, we're going to use the interface type. Uh, Android Studio is kind enough to provide that to us in a dropdown. So we'll go ahead and use the dropdown and save. Okay. So, so far we're ready to go here. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to say specimen DAO dot search and pass in search term. And I think our hard coded result was expecting Redbud. Again, remember this is just a mock up. So specimen DAO search, uh, search Redbud. Control Alt V, extract this to a variable. And we're going to say, we'll just call it plants. 
uh, or actually it's specimens, isn't it? So specimens, like so. Okay, uh, so we will say fetch the specimens that match the search term, just like so. That's good. Okay, um, next we're going to say set list adapter. Oh, shoot. Well, the list adapter, that's what's actually going to show these items on a list. Uh, but the trick is that we need to create a list adapter first. A list adapter is kind of like a controller. It takes our data and it makes it available to the user interface. So let's hold the thought on set list adapter for now. Let's make an array adapter to show our results. Okay, array adapter. Uh, ooh. Okay, array adapter plant DTO. See, that's interesting. It's actually getting back a plant DTO, not a specimen DTO. But okay, we'll run with that, and we'll say uh, plant adapter, or we'll just say yeah, plant adapter is fine. Equals uh, new array adapter plant DTO. Okay. And let's alt enter to import the array adapter. Uh, call the constructor. Now the constructor is a little bit tricky. We have to pass in a context. Uh, that's the easy part. So this, uh, the, that represents the current object, which is a fragment. And you know what? That's not going to work. We'll have to say get activity, uh, which gets the activity which owns this fragment. Next to the layout, we'll show one thing at a time. We'll say android.r.simple. Uh, sorry, android.r.layout. There's a predefined layout we can use. Simple, list item one is fine. And then finally, the collection we wish to show, which is the specimens. Okay, and terminate with a semicolon. Now we'll say set this specimen list in the fragment. And we're going to say set list adapter, and we're going to use our plant adapter. Okay. It's a little bit crude so far, but that's good enough to use our prototype, our stub, in other words, to simply put an item on this list and make sure it works. We do have a few more things we need to do, though. We need to make an activity, and we also need to make a menu option to get to this screen. Although, actually, I think we already have that on our... Uh, yeah, show saved. We can just use that, that button. That's fine. Okay. So this fragment, this specimen show fragment, is simply a little box in the bigger, act, in the bigger uh, layout. We need to make an activity to handle that layout. So I go to the plant places package, right-click, new, Java class, and I'm going to say specimen show activity. And I'm going to choose OK. And, yeah, that's fine. And I'm going to say specimen show activity, extends activity, that's fine. And, uh, okay, alt, oh. alt enter, organize imports. Not a whole lot I need to do here just yet. There'll be more when we wire up the search, but at the moment I just need to override the onCreate method. And I need to say, we'll go ahead and leave the super in there, and then we'll say set content view. Okay. And for this, we'll say r dot layout dot uh, what was the layout that we could specimen show specimen show okay that wires up our layout and I choose save. Now this is called specimen show activity. I'm going to take a look at our Android manifest. Android manifest, and we need to make an entry for the uh, manifest. Uh, simply make it an activity, just like we see here. So activity. Android name equals, uh, let's see, it gives us an option here, specimen show activity. Yeah, that's perfect. We're going to call this with an, uh, with an explicit intent, so we don't need an action or a category, because we're going to explicitly say we want specimen show activity. And I choose save. I go back to GPS a plant, and let's remember the button we're going to click to see this specimen show activity. We're going to click on show saved. Let's see if we currently have anything wired up to that button. I uh, go to GPS a plant, and I'm going to look for show saved, and the on click is btn show saved clicked. So I copy this, 
I go back to GPS a plant, control F, and we're going to see we do have a show saved click, and it's just a dummy implementation right now, something that we're just using to test things out. I'll remove that, and I'm going to add an explicit intent to invoke our specimen show fragment. Okay, an implicit intent. First, we need to define the intent. Intent, specimen, show intent equals new intent and we'll say this comma and then specimen show activity dot class okay we don't need anything back from this activity so i'm just going to say start activity and specimen show intent uh, if i wanted a result back from this i'd call start activity for result but at this point start activity is just fine i choose save we should be all set now. I've made a lot of changes, but we should be all set. So I will go ahead and start this in the debugger, and we'll give it just a moment. I did have to make one small backward compatible change. If we take a look at uh, specimen show activity, I simply changed the signature of the onCreate button. Uh, I'm sorry, the onCreate method and the supercall so that it would be compatible with my AVD version 19. In any case, I click on show saved. And let's take a look at what comes up. We have our enter search term. And we know we don't have that filled out yet. As a matter of fact, we're going to have to have it clear when we click into that. But we hard coded this. That's okay. And we have our search button. And take a look. Our Circus Canadensis came up from our stub or our prototype, the specimen, uh, the specimen DAO stub. That's great. That's exactly what the stub is for. So in our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to the actual uh, offline specimen DAO. In other words, the actual implementation. We'll fill out the search method, and then we'll see live results in our fragment. I look forward to seeing you then.